mankind became stupider at a frightening rate. You always gotta end on your best joke. I was gonna ask you, forget where it's at right now. Everybody has, of course, their opinions on, and rightfully so, what the direction of, of, of Blizzard. But just from that either contract or employee perspective, how was it through those years, especially during that that era of uh, of wow? Man, we were like a family, you know, uh, Blizzard was small at the time. We had only, uh, I would say, under 200 employees. And when I started, it was like 60 people. Uh, <clears throat> and it was so tight knit. We were like a band of band of brothers, right? Uh, we would we would make games during the day, and at night we'd sit around play Magic: The Gathering or Legend of the Five Rings or any number of things uh, together, sitting in the hallways, um, you know, with our cards, and we would fight like brothers too. Mm -hmm. the design arguments were extremely passionate, and <laughs> I just had this I one it. guy, one guy, James Finney, brilliant, brilliant game designer and writer. Uh, he his favorite phrase was in, in counter argument was if someone said something he didn't like and proposed something that we do something he's like sure you could do that if you want to make a bad game <laughs> so that, uh, but you know what but we always came out of those meetings united it's like okay we mm -hmm. fight to get the best ideas and then once we had the idea we all pulled behind it and that's the important part and that's gone now blizzard okay. is extremely corporate and there's a lot of infighting and unfortunately a lot of dei politics inside the studio now and you can tell that activision has basically taken over the entire company and uh you know and microsoft now obviously uh, uh who knows what microsoft influence will bring but given their the reports on guidelines on dei not good things right. uh but it it would you know as soon as it turned corporate i said that's it it's time for me to leave what are you waiting for i'm jumping out a window six months after we shipped wow i um and i'll never forget the moment uh that that i made that decision uh it was actually six months before i left they asked me to lay off the most successful team in blizzard history on the eve of our greatest game and they said you got to go in and you got to and you got to chop people and I said, no, I said, we are a family. We, we've been telling people for years, we're not electronic arts. We don't hire developers and then fire them as soon as we're done with a game. This is wrong. And I'll never forget what happened. The VP turned to me and said, well, we're a real company now. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Times wow. have changed now that money is here. Okay. And that's when I started to make my plans to leave. Uh, six months later, I sent in my resignation letter. Uh, they asked me, the CEO and founder called me back, said, what could we do? You want a sabbatical for a year? What, 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 what can we do? And I said, nothing. I'm burnt out. I've got two Blackberries going off with messages about wow emergencies every day. I need a break. So I, that's when I left. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, speaking of wow, I mean, I'm a big, people that follow me know I'm a big MMO uh, RPG uh, guy, just the RPG, especially more particular action RPGs for sure. But I have to ask you, definitely as someone that has been part of that development and all that, and me and my our man's ass, aka Hill versus Babyface, we've talked about this extensively because he's a big fan of the genre uh, as well. In fact, I think it was it was Wow that was one of the games that kind of put put him on. And, and we've talked about how, and I, I know I've discussed this many of times, how that genre, right? It hasn't taken that next step as far as that next generation feel, right? We've yes, there's the the Final Fantasy online, the Elden uh, Scroll, uh, Scrolls online, or all that, or Elder Scrolls online. All that exists, but we haven't seen that next. Been a lot of stuff like coming from like a lot of Korean uh, 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 excuse me developers, but they haven't quite taken the next step. Why do you think that is? Is it more the, the the technical aspect of why that that genre hasn't taken that next step? As someone that has obviously developed maybe the last one that kind of pushed the envelope, what do you what do you think is is the reasoning for that? Well, I'll tell you when when World of Warcraft came out, there were so many copycats. It, it was so funny because yes. they would even copied some of our mistakes, and the genre the genre stagnated, and I think. 
what happened was wow wow killed it wow came in and was the dominating thing and 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 we used to have so many more interesting mmos before world of warcraft right okay. the original star wars mmo very different type of sandboxy game right completely different we had planet side which was uh built in an mmo at the time where you had these massive battles going uh, uh around uh, the server and we had so many experiments uh ultima online also a very different type of game um and when wow came out everyone said oh that's the way you do it and nobody wanted to fund anything that was different okay they said give us sense. wow and that was the problem for even my own company where the owners were like give us wow and i would be like no and if you try to copy wow you're doomed to failure you're going to stagnate and we need to innovate we need to push mmos into the next boundaries the problem is mmos are some of the most expensive games that's what i figured play. Okay. Activision has said if you were to try to do World of Warcraft today, it would cost a billion dollars. Jesus. A billion. Not, you know, that would be the one of the most the most expensive game ever made. And I I, I you know, what's driving the cost here is not just the complexity of the MMO, but also the amount of content you have to provide yeah. and that has to change and there's ways to change that. Uh, and also the art explosion. Here's what screwed everybody in AAA. When Gears of War came out, and I follow Cliffy B, and Cliffy B follows me. We have very different politics, but we see, we see eye to eye on design. And he came out, and with Gears of War, with Unreal, with Epic, the first uh, Unreal title with next-gen graphics. And the graphics were incredible. Yeah. Uh, that was the watershed moment. We all sat around developers and went, oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. Can I swear on this? Channel? Yeah, of I'm course. Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Trust me, you're good on that. You are good on that. We said, "Oh crap!" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and everybody had to learn how to do next gen graphics. And next gen graphics, you know, it it would take us like maybe three days to make a monster in World of Warcraft. With next gen graphics, you're looking at a team of four working for six weeks on a monster. Jesus. So it was orders of magnitude more complicated to do next-gen graphics. And nobody had the personnel. And everyone was scrambling to hire. It was a great time if you were a game developer or a game artist especially. And team sizes started to get out of control. Okay. Out of control. Because you're talking about 10x the complexity, right? So you try to do that in an MMO, and now MMO is going to take a long time. Look, the average time to make a new IP in AAA is seven years now. Shit. Okay. Wow. And, uh, and that's how bad it's gotten. And it's it, these gigantic team sizes are unmanageable and actually slow everybody down. And the other, and so this is why nobody wants to invest a billion dollars in an MMO. Nobody wants to take that sort of risk unless they follow a formula they think works. And okay. that formula is and always has been wow. The only ones to break away sem you know, successfully, and they didn't deviate that far, but they innovated, was Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, yeah. And they relaunched that game, and they have a fantastic storyline. I love that game. I actually like it better than WoW, and um, they, they knocked it out of the park. Uh, but they're the only ones. That really changed the formula up in a meaningful way. Yeah, and it, succeeded. It, I mean, there have been attempts. But yeah, yeah. Th that's what I was about to say. There's been there's been those attempts, and that's what I figured. I figured that cost technically, and also when you're trying to uh, make things look far more realistic with this whole next gen situation, I can see that. That makes sense as to why it will cost more. I for sure wanted it from a uh, developer's perspective, and, and what that is. Now, with that being said, we also are seeing. With and taking, I guess, advantage of of these these engines that are out there that you're seeing small development teams be able to do things that were that are now like really, really competitive, um, not necessarily in the MMO genre, uh, but that are doing more smaller scaled games that are maybe in some cases competing with the, uh, even the triple A's. Now, you're so right. Right. So with, with that being said, though, like. <laughs> Is that the way of the future? And if you can kind of put that into perspective, use all the, the jargon and lingo that you need to to put that into perspective, like in comparison, when you were coming up and the cost that would be associated to make a game that looked e anything like what it does now that some of these smaller teams and smaller devs are doing 
versus what you can do now and what you can um, accomplish? Are you able to kind of put that into more perspective? Well, my chat here in my Ember Discord just told me that Cliffy B unfollowed me. I must have been something. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. It is possible to reach much higher quality. Look, indie games used to just be 2D sprites and, and, and simple graphics because that's all we could do. Uh, but the tools have gotten so much better. Engines have gotten so much better. And AI-assisted tools have gotten so much better. I know AI gets a bad rap, but if you look at it as a tool for the artist and a tool for teams and creators to achieve their vision rather than a replacement for creativity, that's the real focus of where you can get these benefits in in game production uh so the problem is is that triple a studios have gotten very very lazy and fat covid was boom time right you had so much customers so much sales you could do anything and make money people were so hungry for games sitting at, at home and and what happens when these studios get really big is you get a lot of Dilbert-like corporate politics, unfortunately. Your PowerPoint slides impress the executives so much that they're changing our entire strategy. Those slides were nothing but a bunch of garbage dressed up to look good. And that's what our new product line will be. And I know friends at Blizzard told me everything that went on there. These, you get departments that build up. Oh, I want to be a lead for the for this department. I want to be a lead for that department. And they start competing with each other for influence and power within the company. You okay. get these battling business units. And how do you, how do you, what do you need to do to compete in a political situation like that? You need an army. So what do you do? You go out and hire people and you try to increase your budget and you try to become more important in the company, have more influence. So there was a lot of fat that was happening during uh, the COVID era. There's a lot of people bulking up and these team sizes just so they can have more sway and more influence in companies. And there's no incentive to downsize, not from the manager level. The incentive to downsize and the reason we have layoffs now is because the COVID boom is over. Games have to actually deliver profit because DEI and ESG funding has dried up. Right. And that is when you're seeing these massive layoffs and you can make a game with a much smaller team. Even AAA does not need 600 people spread over eight studios worldwide to make a game. You actually slow down productivity. Anyone who's read classic software development like the Mythical Man Month studies like that know that the more people you add to the team helps up to a certain point. And at that point, communication and coordination gets so difficult that you're actually probably five times less productive than an indie dev. Thanks for watching right now. The Ripperverse is in the middle of our latest campaign, Yaira Number no. 1, which was written by the Saskas. Head over to Ripperverse.com, pre-order and check out our first live action trailer and the latest Ripperverse Studios production. Y'all be easy.